I'm ready. Welcome to Coach's Corner, episode four. Here with I'm Coach Ricochet. Here with my guest, as usual, or not guest, co-host, uh, I should say. <laughs> I, I was like guest. I thought you were going for uh, for, for milk, and then you were uh, like uh, as usual. Like, as usual, I'm like, uh, okay, yes, League of Mans, uh, head coach of uh, League of Legends Affairs, uh, here for the university, and our special guest this week. What's up? I'm Milk, Estige, all of the above. Uh, I'm the team lead for the Ferris Overwatch team. For how long now? Uh, three years now. Well, a, a leader, slash, yeah, a leader, probably like, I don't know. Year and a half, two years since you left, but I've been on the team for three years. So yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Talk about so, you know how did how did how did the team get together? What was your experience on joining the team? I know I've talked about so, how I originally got on, but yeah, oh, you already talked about how you got yeah, yeah, in the, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I joined, or I came to Ferris in like 2017. And I was just playing Overwatch casually. Like I had gotten pretty high into Masters before, but there's definitely a lot I could improve on. And so I was kind of like, I was just sitting in my room one day and I'm like, I wonder if there's like stuff going on at Ferris, like for esports. I wonder if there's a team, blah, blah, blah. And I couldn't find anything like anywhere on any of the Ferris websites. And so I actually just Googled like Ferris State esports or like Ferris State Overwatch team. And I found a Reddit post from Adam who is our off tank on the team asking to start a team. And it was from like two days prior to when I was looking for that. And that's how it like, gets like no posts. It gets like yeah, three or four posts a year for so sure. Like two and so that was wild that like things happened that close together. And you guys already had like five or six people that were interested. And I think we ended up probably having like 10 people try out or like, some more than enough to make a team i just remember being so nervous to like tr- play anything on the team um and you guys had already had a practice before i even showed up and so you guys were like oh people who came to this first practice like they're starting our first game and i was like dang dude like i want like that's where i want to be like i want to be starting and then one of the guys backed out and i ended up getting to start and gotten and ended up getting to main heal, which was what I wanted to do. So that was pretty awesome. And then there on out, team developed, and we just kept kept going. Yeah, it's been so. a wild ride with you know the core of five, what uh, the five six of us that started the team um, are yeah. still either playing still or four. friends. Yeah, still have four of them that are actively on the team this semester from three years ago. Yeah. Um, and then me being the fifth that's involved, and our sixth actually still. Uh, is planning on coming back to Ferris and get involved. So it's really crazy how the original core of people kind of just like stayed the same, and it's been nuts like adding adding new people back in and there, and yeah, just, just developing the team. Everybody grew a ton. We were like kind of rough when we started, and then over the past for years, sure we pretty cracked. I think the difference is like I was mainly looking to get on the team just so I could get better at the game and increase just for solo play and climbing on the ladder and everything like that. And instead, like we grew so much as a team and as individual players. And now we're all just like such good friends who communicate every day. Like there's no doubt that I keep these friendships until like after I graduate. And that I think is like the most memorable part of the team. But the fact that the four like core people, uh, you know, myself and Bry on dps and adam on tank like the three of us on the team like have been the core for three years and then we i mean nm3 who is on our other team uh overwatch gold like he he really like stepped up and he developed from being like 3000 peak for a while and now he's in Grandmaster, um, like solo queuing all by himself, and he's our off support. And we got a really good main tank, and we got another really good DPS, and everything just like 
really worked out for us. It did. It just kind of like felt as you know we lost a DPS player. We're like, oh, we're out of DPS. Like we started looking towards gold team, and then we just got a. I just got a message from or an email from a kid one day. He's like, hey, like I saw on the Bulldog News post, and we have an Overwatch. Yeah. Like, I, I play support. Like, can I come try out? And he yeah. tried out, and his aim was really good. And he's like, oh, I play support. I'm like, we have two supports. Would you try out playing Reaper for us? Like it's easy. Do something else, bro. Yeah, and so like he's like actually a support main, but he's just been playing DPS for us for years, and now he's like more of a DPS player. And I'm like, yeah, okay. yeah. But I mean, it feels yeah. weird when we go to play ranked with him and he actually hops on support. I'm like, what are you doing? You're throwing. He's like, that was my main role. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I yeah. totally forgot. He's about like, that. dude, I was like 4.1k like support, and I'm like, nah, bro. Like, just play DPS. Come on, yes. just, just be one of the homies to play DPS. Like, yeah, but we've gelled like a ton. We still, you know, talk every day, even if we're not skimming. Like, it's, it's for sure. A, uh, agreed with the whole keeping friendships up to graduate. Luckily for me, I'm sticking around, so it's a little bit easier. Yeah. And it's like on top of just doing the TESPA stuff, which we'll talk about later, uh, it, it's crazy that we as a six like core or even seven or eight of us now with you coming back and playing with us in other leagues and Telos coming and playing with us as well. Uh, it's like we have a really solid team that we it, we could definitely play in other divisions and like other leagues. And there's no doubt that we can get better, but it's just the game is getting stale and a little old. And so it's yeah. no new it's hero hard. releases in a long time is, but overwatch two is the light at the end of the tunnel where it's like, okay, you know, they're working on it. That's what they need to bring this game. Like if that game sucks, overwatch is dead. Uh, if overwatch two is amazing, it, overwatch is going to be around for 15 years. So, Oh, Alex, you muted yourself. You muted. Well, no, that's just, uh, it, like, to me, honestly, it's kind of insane because, like, you don't really have those stories of teams sticking together. Like, either, like, there's an internal strife or, like, people go off to different teams because, obviously, this is, like, my first complete year in Collegiate. And even before then, it was, like, different various uh, teams I'd work for. You'd, you'd be together for, like, 16 oh. weeks, like, a semester, you're back. All right, nice. And then, like, things would just break up again and people would just go off to different teams and stuff. So, like, having the same, basically, core for, like, the entire time is insane actually yeah it's not something that we expected because when we started like a lot of us were like upperclassmen too i ended up switching degree or switching majors which added some time um adam's a graduate or he graduated with his undergrad and went to graduate school so he got extra time that way um alex alex and the rest of the guys were just pretty young when they were like early in their college career when they started so yeah we really kind of got lucky with how how good the players were how well we gelled together and then how good we got after that um, well, we've talked about it for a while too. It's crazy that a school our size has been fortunate enough to get six, eight, you know, ten amazing players that are all great at Overwatch out of the whole, um, you know. Yeah, you see state. a lot of different like schools our size will normally have like one or maybe two people per game who are like good and like can like carry a team and really be like at the top level, uh, and somehow our we just put all of our stats in overwatch and we <laughs> with, with six cracked players and like like for no reason like it wasn't like we like did anything different with any of the other teams and it's just like the other teams you know gold plat average and then we're just like oh yeah by the way we're all grandmaster we're all top you know we're finishing top 16 in the nation without scholarships like when we have those resources we can get even better and we'll hope to elevate all the teams to that level of success but it's cool to have that level of success in one game to show the administration go hey you know if we put resources in we got lucky now that's gonna fade really quick if you don't help us put more resources back into it and continue to grow that program i think uh, the, oh sorry go ahead man uh the, the other thing i kind of want to bring up is the fact that like you didn't just have these players like you developed a lot of them like i know john you talked about yourself you started as a gold player and like mm -hmm. then you just worked with the team and, and worked your way up and that kind of development speaks a lot more towards like the team environment as far as like everyone's looking to improve everyone else everyone else is looking to develop everyone else and it's not like you just got lucky there are other yeah, things definitely. there that like you found goal players you turned them into, into masters players right that's something that's yeah, insanely times. difficult yeah, yeah exactly and that's not something that just happens right i mean i've been trying to do that with the league team and i get to diamond and then stuff stops you know so well, it's the crazy the crazy yeah, thing the crazy thing is that we did that in the beginning. Like we didn't have any coaches or guidance and we weren't, you know, we didn't have someone like you or like John O'Neill that knows how to play the game and know the inside and outs of it and who is able to get you and develop out of bronze, gold, whatever. Uh, but we, we just developed 
we just strictly on. It. We practiced a ton of better. the wrong things <laughs> and just <got laughs> beat a bunch and then just started copying people. It's kind of how it went. yeah, we learned a lot. And one of our strengths is just being able to play almost any comp and just beat people on it. Yeah. Um, but our, our strategy is just copy with their copy the heroes they're playing and just beat them at it. And yeah. it's kind of worked out. And it's like, okay, cool. We should start. <laughs> we've recently started prepping for the metas and like exploring what we think is the meta. But if something's yeah. wrong, we'll just go back to copy them and, and be better. Yeah, we're our starting. Team, a lot of it is the synergy that we have as, as a team. Like, I can when I'm playing main tank for this team, I trust. Like, I, I can't see behind me, right? I don't look behind me that often, but I don't need to. Like, I know Milk's gonna be healing me. I know the team's gonna be there, and I know if they're not, they're gonna tell me so I can react accordingly. Um, which is a pretty yeah. weird feeling because solo queuing, you have to play so different. Like, babysit your team. Are they doing what they're supposed to? But like with these guys, yeah. it's just like, hey, you know, I trust you. And uh, so for me, I think it. I think it's just, uh, you know, we got lucky with players that have the skills, but uh, we lost one of our healers really early on. I think right after our first year, when we were starting to come back for our second year, we lost one of our healers. Uh, and he was like the, one of the highest rated people on our team too. So we were, we were pretty worried about the future, but we all just adapted enough to where, yeah, I can go play tank if I need to. Adam can come heal if he needs to. Quinning can go tank if or support if he needs. Like we can all pretty much yeah. play each of the different roles if someone is gone. And I think that is one of the craziest things that like has helped really pilot our team. But the difference in understanding or, or the benefit rather of something like that is people know how the other roles work and how important they are and how to play the other roles. Like, Hey dude, like I, I can say to one of our tanks, bro, like you shouldn't be standing over there. You should be doing this instead. And from me, like it sounds stupid coming from a damage player that doesn't very often play tank. Like if Bry was telling someone how to play Reinhardt, like that's probably going to sound kind of stupid because he doesn't play that hero very often. So but it's just the <laughs> it's just the different rotations. Yeah, we were like we had we were at, we've gone to multiple tournaments where we've been down a person like one of our starting players, and we've just like <laughs> slotted around according. Like when we went to the Western tournament and got second, like we were literally missing one of our our star uh, healer players, and that's that's the first time we like pulled Zach up. Like we had been swapping them in and out, but that's no, he wasn't there. even there, bro. You played tank and Adam played support. Oh, that's right, Adam played support. Yeah, yeah Adam yeah. played tanks and Adam played support. Yeah, yep, yep, but that was totally, like yeah. We just like we had seven guys at the time. One couldn't make it, and then we just swapped around. And now, like, if we had this team at that tournament, we would have like we would have just we would have stopped. We would have won that tournament too, though, if it was legitimately any other meta. Yep. Like Western was. They were really good at that very specific double shield. Double (laughs) shield doomfist meta for sure. Bluefin was a crazy doomfist. Like, got to hand it to the guy. The dude won the series for him, like by himself. Like the rest of the team played really well around him, but the dude deadlifted the team. Yeah. Anyways. We won't go on my thoughts about last <laughs> No, 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 no. It's fine because like I've I've rambled about League before. Like we yeah. we've rambled on League, we've rambled on CSGO. Yeah. So like this is fine. Jono can have his moment now with you and can you know Overwatch yeah. geek out stuff. I don't. I've um, never played League be- before, and I can't ever see myself playing it. So yeah, here, Heroes <laughs> of the Storm players. So. I played Heroes of the Storm to get Overwatch sprays and an Overwatch skin way back when. I actually enjoyed it a little bit, but there's so much fundamentally that you miss out on. So, but. It's unlike anything else. It, like yeah. you, you can compare MOBAs to other MOBAs, but you can't compare it to anything else. Yep. It's, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's different. It's a different set of skills. Because like then when I go to play Overwatch, I'm like completely like I just shoot the whoever's in front of me. Like I don't really care. Oh, like, yeah. Just that guy. Okay, sure, sure, just shoot him. Um, <laughs> where like I know John is like just making the transition now to league, and he's just like this is completely different. This is I've oh, got to yeah. click to move. This is so weird. This yeah. is yeah. Not even being in first person, like, so Overwatch has taught me. So I never played any like other game competitively or even at a high level before Overwatch. So like, 
over like grinding my way through the ranks in Overwatch has taught me a lot just about how to play shooters in general. I grew up playing Call of Duty, but it was like 2v2 offline with my brother because we didn't have internet. So it's like you don't learn anything. You just like learn how to the other person plays and react accordingly to that. Um, and so like, I just learned a ton of that in Overwatch. That of, like, a, like I'll go to another shooter and just be like actually pretty decent. I'm like, oh, this is really cool. Like I hit Platinum Valorant like super super early and it's like oh i, I kind of understand the, the way these games play but coming into league is like none of these skills transfer and it's like oh okay like cooldown timers do but that's about the only one and it's been it's been an adventure for sure yeah i mean if i really wanted like a, a real career future in this i would have picked a shooter first because <laughs> that can transfer from game to game like csgo and yeah. valorant you see like csgo's playing in the valorant like first tournament and, like he had no hiko and a couple other people from 100 thieves were the one that wanted i'm like okay these are csgo go guys and stuff yeah. like that we're like that stuff kind of transfers as far as like league it's like league dota Heroes of the Storm, sorta, and then you're stuck. <laughs> well, Heroes of the Storm is like, like Pro Scene, like they officially murdered it already. So yeah, yeah, and then well, yeah. Blizzard, Blizzard Pro Scenes in general, man, come on. Like <laughs> I SD2, like the Overwatch, Overwatch. I mean, I'm that's... Overwatch League is great, but it's been poorly done in the past, and they yes. keep changing the format of it. And I think it's. I think they're getting better. It's it's gonna stick around more when the home stands are an actual thing. I really feel like those are the way of the future, and especially I am such a huge proponent for team-based esports cities people in esports are like oh i don't like that you legitimately just get free fans like i've seen so many pictures of people being like hey we were watching the boston uprising in a bar and a, some old guy walked by and was like oh hey go boston and he's like i don't know what, what you know i don't know what that is on the tv oh, yeah. but he just sees everyone wearing boston jerseys in the same color and he's like whoa they're winning they're just because they're cheering he's like yeah let's drink it's like you know hockey and hockey and basketball fans when you go to detroit you're just like you know they understand the game a little bit but you can go like yeah detroit wins so when you have the teams like that you just get so many more people who just like buy in and even if they're sitting around and they don't understand it like people's kids or people's parents will be like oh i don't really know what's going on but it's a philadelphia team and i like all philly sports so like i'll watch it a little bit and i'll get to know it with my kid and that's kind of how you build a, a longer lasting fan base in my eyes that's yeah, um i i think <laughs> no, go on, no, i've got a long speech about this so go okay. ahead i was gonna uh, say i i agree with your point of team-based esports teams are superior to something like who is who is hundred thieves i don't know where they are we know they're probably in la but someone who's at a bar in chicago and they're like well do i vote for the chicago huntsman or do i vote for this team that i have no idea where they're from i'm from here i'm probably gonna root for this person you know so I I agree with your point of it's more important to have team based or city based teams. Uh, so I, obviously I've I've done a lot of talking as far as like marketing and building fan bases and stuff um, for league in in particular um, because in Europe it's completely different because they have like a division two like national leagues that are based off of countries. So then you have like the Spanish league, the the you know United Kingdom league, the Italian league, the German league, all those things, and they have fan bases based off what like nationality they're from. They're like, hey, if you're from this area, you cheer for these teams when they go to the big tournament. Um, and in America, we don't have that because we're so unified as like a sort sort of, sort of. Um, and the fan bases here are based off. Um, somehow identifying with them whether your parents cheered for them whether you cheer for them because they're your local team or you cheer for them because you've always cheered for them those are like the three ways that you become fans um and why universities is probably the easiest way to build fandom for that because hey look i went to this university i'm going to support them because i went to the university um and then that's how you build like generational fan bases is based on hey look i went here my parents went here like we're cheering for them because all these people went here and it's yeah. a similar thing to like the detroit the city base where it's like hey look i grew up in detroit i've lived in detroit my whole life i cheer for these teams because they're detroit teams right that's just how you build fan bases and how you build like fandom in general and why it's easier for colleges to get funding rather than a random team because again you don't have that innate fan base already like 100 thieves when they first started in league it was um hard for them to build fans because all they had was nate shot nate shot obviously was call of duty and shooters yeah and us league players we don't relate to that at all we're like okay cool like we, sure we see some youtube videos and that's it and then they had content and they got all these big streamers and then they branch out into other games and then their fan base grew because hey look he's doing csgo now he's doing all these other things and i uh, was getting teams from australia and all the australian fans love him because he's got this and um so yeah that's uh, i 100 percent agree league tried doing city leagues and it didn't work because it's just too small everyone no one wants to watch the second tier unless it's university in america because i mean there's like the xfl 
<laughs> and there's yeah. like the G League basketball. There's these leagues that exist, but no one watches them. Everyone well, people just don't watch. even watch Overwatch contenders, and that's like the step before the Overwatch. I watched league. every Overwatch League game for the past three years almost. I haven't seen yeah. a contenders match that wasn't like no. The contenders Twitch channel has like max of like two K viewers and like prime time during the day of like a grand finals because just no one cares. And then the only time people hear about these people in contenders is if they're streamers or from YouTube videos or from highlight videos on YouTube. Other than that, like you don't ever hear about what's going on. Yeah. And people are always like support tier two. We need to give them more money. It's like, yes, but also blizzard isn't just going to shovel cash into the void for no reason. Like, there yeah. is no viewership. There is no return on that. The return on that they're getting from it is the right. league. And I like how they're offering like spot slots. So like the, the Overwatch League teams have their minor teams. Uh, but Boston's minor team actually got relegated. Like they still can get, they got, they were in contenders and they got pushed back to contenders trials because of how bad they were, uh, at least from my understanding. And it's just like, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. They, they finally worked their way yeah. back up. They're back now, but they were just like, yeah. Boston's Overwatch League team was so bad that their B team was even worse. And like, out of the B leagues, and it's like, come on. Well, it's super hard for Division Two to get funding in general because of like I know I've I've had conversations with you about how teams get funding. It's you know through sponsorships, it's through the league in general, or it's through just investment. Um, sponsorships are based on what you can give back to the company as far as advertising, uh, the streams, everything else, Twitter impressions, YouTube videos, all that stuff. Um, the league, which in when I was in the UK was the majority of it was the league was giving them like ten grand or something like that to participate. Um, and then there's investments, but then for investments, you have to show growth, per, like a projected growth, and then like your total evaluation currently and where you see it going. And that's impossible to do without the other two. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's really hard for, for teams to get funding or like get like big money because I know like in, in UK, a lot of the players, like the most like salary wise was $500 a week. Um, which is good for like those are like top teams, like Fnatic, those are like salads, that kind of stuff. But like for the teams I was working for, it was just prize pool, it was a percentage of prize pool. And uh, I don't want to give exact numbers, but let's just say that uh, if I worked at McDonald's for a week, I probably would have made more uh, <laughs> as far as like. Sounds about uh, right. Yeah, so I mean, this isn't like living wages, which is again why university is the, the best way to do it because hey, look, you go, you go to school, you get this money to go to school, and you're also playing. So there's the best of like all three worlds of like, hey, you've got a future after this. If it isn't any sports, you, you've got money off so you can actually go to school and, and survive and live comfortably. And then you're playing the game you love because yeah. you're you got scholarships and stuff. So, um, yeah, again, why I've been preaching. I'm on Twitter arguing with everybody about <laughs> university versus Div 2 because uh, Riot just announced a Div 2 league for league. And I'm just like super against it because there are smaller leagues already. There's Uprising. There's a couple other leagues that just, like I said, 300, 500 people watch. That's it. Mm -hmm. Like the, the peak for a regular season game was 74 viewers. Like that's that's nothing. I was, like, like, bandwidth ball, like, I was just saying, our yeah. bandwidth ball had that for league. Like yeah. I, yeah. I don't get it. Like I don't know. So. Yeah, that my, my rant's over. That, that <laughs> you've got out yeah, of my yeah. area of expertise. The scholarship to thing too. A lot of players, or a lot of our current players, are like, "Hey, I'm the best player in the team. Can I get a scholarship?" I'm like, first of all, I really appreciate you're the best. You're here already. Like, like I love you guys, <laughs> but like, it doesn't make sense to just like give you money. Um, yeah. you know, you're leaving, so I'm trying to get. I'm trying to pay you to get back. Um, yeah. but and, you know, don't threaten to like transfer schools because I'll let you transfer rather than extortion <laughs> yeah. out of a scholarship, you know. But it's just like, like, yeah, we we want to give back to our players for sure. Um, but you're not getting a full ride if you're here. I'm sorry, like that's just not. Yeah, I think just having an arena or a space for players to like hang out and play games together is a substantial benefit. But look at something like Western; they had a whole arena that was very very cool and like well put on but they just got shut down because i mean covid yeah. first they're, of all but they're going to reopen it we learned so oh it's really not, it's not completely gone but they oh, just like cool. can't they can't even like they can't even be in there and produce anything so they can't do any of their live streams from well there. no i mean they don't make any revenue off of yeah anything from there but if they can't put tournaments on like they were doing i think they were getting money from ticket sales and mm -hmm, everything were. like that from our tournament which was put on so that was pretty awesome but uh I, just having that space is 
it is Ferris has two huge upcoming spaces gonna that are going to be like yeah. that. The new building that's going to be like the new nice building, the new virtual learning center, the showcase of the first floor is going to be an esports sports arena. So it's not going to be the whole floor, but it's going to be a large portion of it. There's going to be spectator seating. There's going to be everything. Um, and that's then we're cool. actually looking at doing a temporary space uh, in one of the old cafeterias. We're going to renovate the floors and the ceilings, the walls, everything, build an office, build seating and, and desks and chairs and stuff too. I'm, nice. after, I'm hoping that we can get some scholarships too because i'm like hey if you're going to spend you know instead of having a temporary building for two years i'd much rather have scholarships to build good teams because we know we're going to get the, the nice building eventually if you're just saying like, oh you'll get the building and then the building's not coming we'll definitely do with the temporary space until then it just really yeah. depends on and, and higher ed is unbelievably slow at everything there is so much red tape involved with like even like just every little bit even trying to get our money from club sports from last year i've been like talking for it's been like six months i'm like hey Dang. We have a coach that needs to get paid, and they're like, oh. yeah, we'll come fill out your forms, and there's like 900 different forms, and you're like, I'm doing it. They're like, okay, <laughs> come pick it up, and then you go there, and they're like, we never told you that, and you're like, okay, well, let's Thank work you. something out. <laughs> and they're getting better. They got a new director who's like really for esports, and he's definitely um, probably not. Nice. And now that my job, you know, as a student, it was a lot harder to like ask for like, hey, I need this, um, because people are like, you're a student, I don't care. You mm -hmm. know, whatever, like, mm -hmm. go away. But now that I'm like, hey, I'm staff. And I'm sending, you know, I don't have to deal with the student employees anymore. I can just go right to the, the other staff member. Like, hey, as a staff member, here's what my club needs. And it's, it's really nice to do that. Yeah. I think our opinions differ a little bit, Mill, because, like, I'd, I'd much rather have, like, scholarship players and have a good team for people to come before they come and view. Because, oh, for sure. you know, like, live esports is great. Don't get me wrong. That's, like, the environment's great. I mean, I went to Little Caesars Arena for the league finals, and that was nuts. Um i got fun stories about that but no, another time um <laughs> but yeah no it's just um i'd, I'd rather have a, a good product to show than for people to come and pay i mean yeah. it, it's like you know people are still paying to go see michigan state even though they suck but like you know i'd rather have a good team for them to go and see and then more people the revenue would increase and that kind of stuff so yeah well, um, if you give me a choice of like players or an environment i would definitely choose players yeah. but if if we could have both you know that of would be of course of course be awesome. but this is real life man you can't always have both <laughs> come on now well, what, yeah. well, one thing that i learned from like covid in march and stuff like that was a lot of players especially i mean for the overwatch and for our test but collegiate thing that they shut down was most of the players don't even have their own computers like to play and practice on and I just thought that was like kind of crazy, but I guess if you're in the dorms, you know, it's not easy to bring a whole a lot a whole of I mean, but look at Zach and curved like, monitor. <laughs> like two of the players from our team lived in the dorms and were fine, you know, all, even yeah. a lot of the other guys did. Some of the schools though, like the schools with those players, they're not the best players because if you're not practicing, you know, sure you can scrim however many hours a week, but if you're also not playing it in your free time like crazy, you're not gonna be a GM player. Like those are the teams with like silver and gold Rocket League teams, and they're like, yeah, I go in and play on the school's Xbox four hours a week, and you're like, that's really cool. <laughs> but like, so well, I, and I like having that center, but whenever I hear admins say like, oh, but like, what if players can't play? And I'm like, we always want players who don't have their stuff to come in and play, but they're not gonna be our starters, like. It's just not like, you know, with football, like yeah. you can't practice football at home. Like you can practice like throwing or whatever, but you can't practice like plays. And it's like, yeah, like you go to practice and you do that. And that's why you do it. But like with esports, it's like there are people who are coming to the teams are already to good and they're already practicing at home and they're already playing a ton. Yeah. Well, it's still hard now because even people on our team don't play outside of scrims. And so it's like, yeah, bro, this is what was happening a week ago, but what's happening on the ladder is six different heroes that were not playing and we should be playing. Like, this is last week, bro. Like, <laughs> stuff yeah. changed already. You need to... Yeah. Overwatch you know, is double shield ain't so cool now, bro. Fast. Like, even, yeah. even when... even So, Blizzard has done a really good job recently of making balance changes and patch changes that actually affect the heroes numbers and making things that just affect how people feel about them because they've they've done specific buffs to characters like they'll buff hogs damage and then like two weeks later everyone's like hogs crazy we should have been playing him they're like when even when the buff like was happening like that buffs nothing it doesn't matter two weeks later everyone's like hogs crazy play hog they'll put his damage back down to normal and now you see him a ton more then people are like oh well he's still pretty yeah. good and you're like dude like as of you know if you look back two weeks he's in the same spot you would have said he's the worst character and now you say yeah he's viable now they tweak just, they put him back to where he was, and then they tweak just one more thing, and everyone's like, yo, he's actually still kind of good now. Yeah. And But then you see something like, 
uh, you know, when Ryan Divas started becoming meta, the only thing that made that viable for the first time ever in the game was Ryan Diva like actually the thing everyone was playing was because Diva got her boosters down from five seconds to three seconds. Yeah, and they put seconds. it to four, and Nobody then everyone's again. like, you know what? She's not as good as she was, and it's just because you lose the mobility for a second. The yeah. rest of the kit is still like Matrix is still insanely busted. Like she yeah. still has everything else, and they're just like, oh, that one second difference is like nobody plays that. Why would you play that? That's dumb. Yeah, like, that was the only thing that was being played. Hero balance, that, it's hard. Yeah, the same I, thing I, with I don't envy Blizzard. If you want to talk, I mean, balance wise for like League of Champion, we get like plus five AD or like plus five moon speed. It means absolutely nothing, but then they instantly become like the most broken champion in the game. Like 100% <laughs> big ban. Like the champion was good before, similar to like what you guys are saying. But um, for, for League, there's a lot more moving parts with items and all this other stuff. So uh, balancing is a nightmare. And I know everyone like flames Riot because they're, it is just absolutely awful. They do st really stupid stuff, but um, I want to say their heart's in the right place, but maybe they just need better people or, you know, stop drinking the Kool-Aid or something like that. Because, like, one thing will be super busted, and they'll be like, hey, hey, this is a problem. Nerf it, and then something else gets really broken. They're like, that's cool, though. That's cool. That's cool. No worries, guys. Like, this is fine. Um, so, yeah, no, it's just uh, – it's a similar thing with League. Um, where, where how, the game many, uh, how many, like, champions or people are there in League? Right now? <sighs> I got to Google that, to be honest. They keep, they've plus. Just, uh, number of League. Overwatch has the problem where the there's the 30. developers are <laughs> are bail are well, through that too. Like, there's not as many levers to pull, but also people like people are okay if Ana's broken because she's fun, and like yeah. people are okay if Genji's a little broken, not too much because he is really not fun to play against. But like those no. heroes, like Ana's <laughs> Ana's fun and fun to play against. Like, yeah, you can get shut down by an Ana, but it never feels like Ana's just dominating us. What do we do? Like, you could just be like play Diva Eater Nades. That's or true, like. man. Yeah, but it's like, yo, this Mercy is dominating us. It's like, nah. She, okay, she was busted when she had two reses and that blah, was just blah, annoying. All that, yeah. but... So there's like 130 or something like that. More than that, it's. Uh... 150 something That's i'm trying wild. to like so they don't give me an actual number which is really annoying because like everything i go it said more than 140 and i'm like i don't care about that i want the actual number so, um uh, do this yeah it's uh, so even in like one the of the unranked, four abilities. even in unranked there's still like uh you know there's 10 bands i assume is it five on five okay yeah. so um, do the do generally five, like five, the five, same like three to five people get banned every yep. game from the games that I've seen, yes. even um, like you'll see that both teams will make the same bands. Even gotcha, because they're just like that guy. Sucks. Yeah, so I mean, there's a couple. Of, yeah, there's a couple of champions that are just like super disgusting. Like Samira currently is like she's one of her abilities blocks all projectiles coming towards you, and there's like you know champions Mine. that so are super reliant on projectiles. You know, <laughs> so it's just like yeah, yeah. And, and she's got like a hundred percent life steal on her ultimates. Like all the damage she does, That's plus wild. she can block all the damage around her, and it's 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 nuts. So like um. They used to say you, you never play the same game of League of Legends twice, um, based on like just champion wise. That is like so rare because of how many champions there are that you'd get the same pick ban twice. But because of like the way balancing has been over the last few years, um, there'll be the same team comps multiple times. I mean, you huh. even see it like pro games where they'll just do like the salty run back where they just literally just play the same comps over again against each other and just be like, Yeah, yeah, dude, we just we just screwed up. Like, we're gonna do it. It wasn't champions, it wasn't anything. We just screwed up. We, we're better than these guys. Um, That's something that yeah. DPS players in Overwatch. Like, so tank players, like, when the tanks are meta, it's like, if you switch, you're throwing. Like, you play those two tanks. Oh, yeah. Or you are literally the other teams going to beat you. But DPS, you're like, oh, hey, can you make a switch to, to adjust? But what's harder for DPS players, I've noticed, is when they're, it's not the hero that's what's wrong. It's the way they're playing it. So it's, like, okay, Reaper is the pick, but don't run ahead of the team and try to 1v6 and then use your Wraith and then get back to the team. And then you're like, I died. I didn't have Wraith. You're like, yeah, but if you would have walked in with us, you could have used it when you actually <laughs> needed it. You would have um, just waited 10 seconds. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like the DPS players aren't used to as much of like tank players. Like, you're like, oh, we're playing Arista Sigma. They're playing Arista Sigma. We're dying. I have to play Sigma differently, or I have to worry about my cooldowns differently. But DPS are normally like, oh, well, I just got to switch characters. And so teaching teaching the DPS uh, players, like, you can also switch your play styles inside of a hero, and it's like, that's been fun. Dude, it's crazy right now, too, because I know we keep talking about Overwatch, and... No, no, <laughs> it's fine. Too, what's no, going no, 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 it's totally fine. So I played a little bit of Overwatch. I'm not, like, super uh, competitive and stuff, but, like, I'm, yeah. I'm, like, level 13 or something. I played some Overwatch. Yeah, yeah Just, so, like, I, with Double Shield, when that was really meta because Baptiste came out, 
Bap was like, dude, you're playing him or you're throwing the game right now. Yeah. And then stuff shifted. And after a year, Double Shield was not what was going on anymore. And Bap just had like probably less than like a 10% pick rate mm-hmm. at any ELO, I swear, because he was just bad. You could just pick any other healer and do more healing or be make more of a difference in the game. And now Double Shield is slowly making a comeback and then make one minor change to Baptiste. And he's like, we're playing minor again, change. boys. He's they gave back. him an IMAX. He's back. <laughs> he's His back, ultimate boy. used to be like an actual square. And now it went from five meter cube to five meters by nine meters. And it's yeah. like, it does double damage through that. So like a lot yeah. of abilities. And so it's it. just insane. But... I, dude, you see a shift in that, but like you have to play Baptiste with double shield. You have to, but you can now play Brig, Lucio, Ana, uh, Zenyatta with double shield as the off support, and it just changes the game just that little that little bit. Even but... watching the goats comps evolve. So the original goats comp was Reinhardt, Diva, Zarya, Lucio, Brigitte, and Moira. Just for like the spam the Moira helped up with the spam heals when the DPS were like shooting you know, people like, run far into it. You'll get barrage. It didn't matter. They had so many defensive cooldowns and so much the H you know, was effective HP. They had a ton of actual HP and a ton of effective HP because they had three healers supporting them. Well then all of a sudden people were, were only playing goats and only playing goats into each other. They're like, wait a second, if we swap the Moira for the Zenyatta, that saves us during grabs because of the transcendence and you get extra damage on the reinhardt so the rein dies faster so then people were playing zen but you'd see people in ranked play the zen version of goats into like dps comps and you're like no the zen version of goats loses to dps comps but the moira version of goats wins against dps comps they're like why are we losing we're playing goats you're, like, you're playing like you don't under, you're not it's understanding wild, why man. you're playing the heroes you're just picking the heroes because you watch the pros do it someone wrote like a 10 page essay on how There's to 70 play goats. pages yeah, it was 70 uh, I pages the whole thing how three to play. Times. It's it was <laughs> really, really good. It was yeah, like a guy trying to, trying to do That's a probably the out. most coach thing I've heard in a while, though. There's a 70-page thing on how to play this comp, and I read it three times. <laughs> it was this guy's thesis on... Yeah. I think he was like doing... He was in school, and he had to write a thesis for something, and he was trying to go uh, pro coaching in Overwatch. Um, and so he wrote this really detailed... Here's when you use your abilities. Here's why you do it. Here's what you, where you squeeze it. It was actually here. pretty awesome. It was really but... solid. And, like, <laughs> as soon as that came out, like within a couple of weeks, like even the teams we were playing against had gotten a ton better at goats like it really got the community a lot better but the guy was uh, not cool at all he's kind of a clown and and he didn't ever got hired because a bunch of like uh like anti-semitic clown. stuff or something came out about him like on his, on his official discord it's like what are you doing but... thanks um so one thing i kind of want to ask like do you think that bands will ever come to overwatch because like league that way because like when new Champions are released in league. They're almost 100% pick ban as far as like in in solo queue because either they don't people don't know how to play against them or there's people are first timing them in your game and they just ruin your game because they ain't. So it's like, do you think that bans will ever become a thing? And then like it's it's Blizzard has said no. They've talked time. about it, but the biggest thing that they said was the issue is that people are like, oh, it would help encourage diversity. Well, what actually happens? What they noticed because they were like testing stuff internally. What happens was the pro teams were using it in some scrims. And instead of, like, whatever they thought was meta, and instead of, like, banning one of the meta heroes and, like, trying to switch it up, they would ban whatever off-meta hero that they thought the other team was better at. So they're like, oh, we play regular goats, but they play somber goats, we're banning Sombra. And, like, now you just have to play us in the comp that we've practiced for three months. And so they noticed, like, instead of helping diversity and helping the meta ship, they were using it to, like, shut down the meta evolution. And so they were like, whoa, never mind, this is kind of a bad And idea. so what they, they, they kind of compromised... So I think what you're referring to is like if we had a if our team had a vote to mm-hmm. pick one hero to save and ban one and then the other team did as well. I think the problem there is there's just not enough like there's 30 heroes in the game. Like if if the team bans two tanks like you're screwed cuz there's like four other that you get to pick from. Mm-hmm. Hey, if you what if they ban Reinhardt and like Sigma? Like, what are you gonna do for the rest of the game? You know. <laughs> so I think there's just an issue with that. But what they did do was they created hero rotations where one. I think they started out with one tank, two DPS, and a support got mm-hmm. banned every week, and it would randomize. And they kind of it used it based at, on pick rate and like ranked pick rate and Overwatch League pick rate. Yeah, and then they just changed it so they were like, yeah, you know what, we're just going to start banning whatever we feel like each week. And so one week they banned 
three of the hit scan heroes to kill this chick that flies in the air, Farah. And so the only person that you could choose in DPS to kill her was Ash. But out of that, they figured out that that hero needed to be buffed. And then that hero got picked a ton because it got buffed. So it kind of helped for a while, but then there were some issues with uh, they were weak Overwatch. Long bands. Le- they were weak so, like, long bands. One and trick, Overwatch like, if you were one trick, you couldn't play yeah, the game. For you were screwed. You were screwed. But so fine. like the Overwatch the League Overwatch would ban four people based on the pick rates in Overwatch League. And then they would ban four people on the ladder. And they would be eight. So you would have eight different people that would be banned, basically. Because they wouldn't pick the same four people. Yeah. And so what happened was we would be playing on the ladder and I would be able to play Ana, but then we would have to scrim the Overwatch League bands. And so I would get to play, we would get to play double shield and say on the ladder, but in scrims, we have to play something else. And so then they unified it after a while and then they just deleted it <laughs> entirely. Yeah. And, and so the, I, at the end, so now that's still in the Overwatch League, actually. We're still, wait, yeah. Yeah. Except for tournaments, you can play anyone in the grand finals. You can play yeah. anyone. So I like it that way. Like have the pros have some variants where they're kind of like shifting things up. Like, oh, okay, cool, that's cool. But like, for don't let it come down. And originally, I was like, yeah, it, it could work in ladder. But after having it in ladder, it wasn't that good. And especially when they were different, pro players were like, I can't practice the comps. I'm practicing in scrims in ladder. And they normally like uh, they've been grinding Sombra all week. Well, they they can't go play Sombra because she's banned. You're like, why? Why are these bands different? So they, they've gone through a lot of iterations. Um, and one thing yeah. I really enjoy about Blizzard is they've come out recently and they said, we don't really know what you guys want anymore. We thought we did. We don't really know. So we're just going to start changing things faster. And and we were like, cool, because it would literally be like three months before they changed anything. And that's like three comp yeah. seasons. So they're like, you know, you'd go through an entire comp season and a half of playing the same exact thing. And they'd make like a small change or they'd make too big of changes because they're like, oh, it's been a long time. We're going to make big changes. You're like, no, do like every two weeks like League does. Just like cr- turn a number like, oh, Hanzo does twice a month damage or just like start hitting <laughs> flips and switches. But every two weeks, people, yeah. the, the game stays fresh a lot faster now. Yeah, and I think the game right now is about in the best balanced state where you can play almost any hero. Well, actually, you probably could play any hero and get away with playing it. Yep. Uh, and not be just yelled at for throwing. <laughs> uh, and, and that is, it hasn't been like that in years, you know, almost since the game came out, probably. Yeah, since people but, actually know what they were doing. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And they introduced this thing called the experimental card. That basically just removed the public test region. They still entirely. use it, but nobody goes to it because they just yeah. they only put new heroes on the public test, and now they do all their other changes and experiments. Yeah, they just they're like, hey, here's a new experimental card where you can just go play quick play, and here's 15 hero changes, and then people give feedback on it, and if they hate it, they then they numbers, don't put yeah. it in the game. And and with that so. that card, the because the public test server, uh, console users couldn't play it. And so yeah, now with the, the experiment, they, they're like, oh, actually oh, more than totally half fine. of their, their user base <laughs> is console players. And so in order to get the numbers yeah. from them, they added this experimental card. It's been actually working well because you're like, they're like, okay, we're going to try some really crazy things. They're like, these changes aren't guaranteed to go in the game. They tried one where Zarya had like, whenever she bubbled someone, it bubbled two people next to them too. Or like it Roadhog, bubbled whenever everyone hit stole, within whatever. like a five meter radius. Yeah. And so you'd, you would, we were running what, like monkey doomfist tracer dive and like they jump in the back line and all of them get a zarya bubble like as a support that felt like this is the worst would, thing that could possibly add yeah. and like yeah but they at that time they had <laughs> locked it so you can only play one tank so like you could only play or something like oh that. yeah but, i forgot about that too they changed it to one tank and three so yeah we, there was damage. genji tracer doomfist dive and you'd have them all jump yeah. the same target all get catch a bubble and like you dot like it felt awful. As the Zarya player, like, I have a billion energy. And You're this like, is really oh, I got cool. 100 energy and grab every five seconds. But yeah. yeah, so they've done some crazy stuff, but it's really interesting to see in this card the, cha- the changes that they're actually trying to make. Like, they keep trying to make, they keep trying to fix or change Moira's fade ability to do more things so it's useful. It's more useful than just, hey, I'm leaving you guys. Or, hey, I need to get healed, so I'm going to go somewhere else and they can't shoot me. Yeah. Um, how do you but feel But they like... keep trying to... Sorry, go ahead, man. No, no. Uh, I'm just saying, how do, you, how do you feel like the hero band stuff affected us in collegiate, like, when we were playing in school? Oh, I think it was awful. But I think 
I think it was only awful because we had to scrim owl bands, but then I then I couldn't play stuff like I wanted to play Anna and I couldn't on the ladder, but I could in scrims, but then she wasn't meta in scrims. So then there was just no point in freaking playing her and I wanted to play her. And so it sucked. But I think in the collegiate something like now where ball is just insane like i'd ban like i would hope ban got or ball got banned all the time but that's not gonna happen so i i I think it was i think it was good for the game because it like offered some diversity and if you're like oh genji genji got a 90 percent pick rate on the competitive ladder this week he is getting banned next week and then he gets banned you're like yes i can survive as a healer again yay i'm so happy yeah and then you get to play for a week and it's awesome but like right now bap is gonna get if it was to happen right now like orisa or sigma is gonna get banned Dude. probably sigma because he's picked he's more than picking. anyone i would assume and then like baptiste and then you'll probably see like echo and tracer get banned and then the meta is completely different for an entire week what meta was like, your favorite to play in as a team as a, dude, I hated goats, but that's because I had to play Brig. I loved goats. But, <laughs> um, I don't know. I as as a healer, I really loved anything that I got to play Ana in. So like Ryan Diva was really fun for me. Our team uh, was really good at that. That just yeah, like all I, of that comp just really hit what we were good at. When Genji was really good too, like it was kind of fun to play Ana because you like just your whole job was to get Nano and then nano blade and like that was cool but you also got dumpstered by ganges all the time so it wasn't super fun but i think ryan diva was probably the most fun because like adam is awesome at diva and he loves playing diva so he got to play that and <laughs> have a great time and everyone just got to play what they wanted zach got to play lucio toby got to play everyone got to play what they want it was awesome yeah that meta um, was like almost exactly like all of our number one picks just happened to fall oh for meta. sure and we got to play i got to play tracer like it was awesome and Probably my second favorite was this one that we just got really good at. Uh, that was the Monkey Diva and Sombra Reaper and Moira Lucio. But it was more. Uh, it wasn't just, really a dive. It was a brawl with with. Monkey it was a brawly. Your Winston is just there to take damage for the Zarya. Yeah. And that was it. And you just enable your Reaper and you just win the game. And you have the better Reaper and your Sombra charges the MP faster and you win. But anyways, that one was awesome because we did really well at it, and you just do tons of healing as Moira. Whatever meta was uh, happened when Moira just had like the most, you did like thirty k healing as Moira in like a fifteen minute game. Like that meta was awesome too because <laughs> she was carry. insane. But yeah, what about what are some of your favorite memories was. with the, with the current like, team that we have, or not even the current team, but just over the with course the of the current team? Well, definitely in the tournament where we went to Western was probably like the best memory that I have of playing Overwatch with the team. Uh, that whole day was just awesome. Like even if we went and like didn't get any money, it probably would have still been an awesome time just for the experience. But we won that first game against Central. We were the first team to play on the main stage. And it was just like a surreal experience yeah. of just pure adrenaline. And then we won and I don't know, it was awesome. And then we won and then we were just like, oh, we just got to win another game and we're definitely going to beat these kids. And then we get money like that was just awesome for us too. Um, other ones like definitely are getting into the top 16 a couple weeks ago or like a couple months ago was definitely the highlight of probably my overwatch career so that's pretty awesome no for sure probably no, top two memories it was weird for me because like i i obviously like i know very little about overwatch but like i yeah. i find myself getting into that game because again because i'm working for ferris and like part of the teams and stuff like that's why i always encourage a lot of the league teams and stuff to be like hey look go go support the other teams because like whether you can relate to the game or not you're cheering for your university right yeah. you're cheering for all these people and like it, it was great that you guys got top 16 like that was insane like i, I watched all of those games um a little sad that you guys got knocked out though because i'm like how much can they can they go like top 10 yeah, like what? the next uh, team, the team that beat us actually made it to top four i think or just yeah um so no i don't even know who won did harrisburg win that yeah they, they oh, well, like, I, I don't even know why i asked that was yeah, stupid <laughs> but i i just like our overwatch team has uh, done 
a ton for the esports scene at Ferris. And I'm just like so happy that I've been able to be a part of that. And like now I lead the team. And just like knowing the fact that I've taken part and like Jono has taken part and all that and like pioneered what was going on. And like I joined super early in the club's lifetime. And just like, I don't know, I've always just had like an awesome time being in the club because I'm like, yeah, John o runs the whole thing. Like, yeah, he's president right now. Like, yeah, bro, we're buddies and everything. Like, it was cool being friends with the president, you know? <laughs> so, like, it's always been just awesome to be, like, a part of the club. And um, I've definitely, like, gotten a ton of people into the club and had friends play on other teams. And I've made a lot of really good friends and have been really, uh, like, and I've just made a lot of friends through the club, like, with Noah and tons of people from other teams so definitely i mean like the group of guys that like that's in our overwatch like we have a group chat now uh well now it's been a group chat running for like three years <laughs> with everybody who's played um yeah. and it's just like still the most active group chat in them and that and then my back home homies like group from my actual friends back home or not actual friends like my re- like friends that i met in real life your your real friends like irl friends friends you know but yeah, in, yeah. In, like with with the overwatch guys like we had we played online we talk online every day but like now we've been hanging not recently but we started hanging out we were going to beat ups together like all that kind of stuff we were going to tournaments in person like it was really cool to just like grow that community and just like recognize players or or even players from other people you like oh hey like you're on the csgo team aren't you like hey i saw your picture when you guys were streaming like you guys did really well it's really cool to just like build that community of people at fair so like you know would norm normally playing the same games but wouldn't recognize each other wouldn't meet each other any other way one of the we got one of the way guys on so in Overwatch there's like a nearby players and it shows you who else is playing the game on your internet connection like on your same like Wi-Fi or same network. It's kind of uh, weird, but all right. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. we actually uh, Sam was living in an apartment complex with Brian and just goes like, "Hey, you play? You're pretty good. You want to join the Fire team?" And like that's how he joined the that's team. That's how like, we got more ago. people on the team. Like that's so, how it's not. Actually, yeah, like a bunch of people yeah. I know have like met friends in the dorms because they're like, "Oh, hey, like who are you? What room do you live in?" Because they're all just playing in the nearby player team. So it's pretty cool. No, that's insane. Um, so, it's a quick transition. Uh, we talked a little bit about Bandwidth Bowl, obviously. Um, obviously, that was last week, and we haven't had an episode since then. So, uh, we want to talk a little bit about that um, sure, league sure. team underperformed, but it was uh, we had Sad. a rough side of the bracket. We, uh, <laughs> we, uh, no, so <laughs> we, we, we stomped game one. We played U of M, which is like a top 10 university right now. And um, like all of their players are GM and all of our players are like plat. So like um it we we lost pretty pretty quick against them. You guys did beat um, the crap out of CMS, But like though. Yeah, well yeah, and they were actually a lot better than I thought they were going to be because like their their team that they gave they they didn't give me a team, but I went and like found through like who they played with and stuff, who I thought was the team and it's like these are all bronze silver, it's like they'll be an easy game. And then there was like one like plat one the rest were like mid plat like low gold and i'm like this game might be harder than i thought and then we just like steamrolled them and um so that was good but then we, we played u of m and got rolled and then we played uh, michigan tech who was last year's second place team for for league um and that was we should have won that game that was super close but uh we ended up getting like seventh which you know going from fourth to seventh never feels great but um i mean everyone Thank had John. fun why didn't you put him in the easy side of the bracket, bro? Oh, no, no, no. Like, I, I just see him. Yeah, I, I literally, I literally asked him. I was yeah, like, okay. hey, honestly, seed me the, the tournaments. And he honestly seeded the tournament. All right, that's yeah. fair. Sometimes. Yeah. We're and, not um, just going to seed. <laughs> no, we're not going to give us the easy side of the bracket just so we win. Come on, man. That's not, that's yeah. not how we were all. It's not how yeah. I want to win. But um, everyone had fun. Like a lot, like the league lobbies and stuff. We were like all typing tr- to each other in game and stuff. The lobbies were all cool. Everyone seemed to have like a really great time. Um, I don't know if you guys saw like the bandwidth. Well, I know Milky probably didn't, but the bandwidth bowl, the league chat, like everyone's like saluting each other at the end of the, the tournament. Oh, it it was no. great. No, it was awesome. It was like something like super cool to see where like no one was like angry. No one was like upset. Everyone was just kind of like chill like happy like it was a great time for everybody so. overwatch we have western we had some issues, like, but... we're pretty pretty good rivals with western and uh central's actually been playing a lot better than western so we're starting to get into them but we've just like personality wise clashed with western for a couple of years ever really since that tournament it's just it was the tournament, the tournament because we got second and we yeah. really started a rivalry with them yeah so we kind of smacked things got personal at the last band with bowl and so. yeah, last band with bowl they were like one kid was streaming and after the stream they like clipped a bunch of his reactions to him like them losing to us and 
It was a lot of fun. So it, it's, it was only an day, issue so because game, he but. started the stream holding up their first place check and said, "We're keeping this one. We're gonna beat you guys." <laughs> after we, Which is after great, we won too. through the whole bracket, and then they had they got sent to the losers bracket like right away, and then won through the losers bracket, and then we beat them anyways. And so we assume. Oh, and then we played a show match against them, and like. Was was that against Western or Central that we did like earlier I don't in the remember year? Remember which one that was? I don't know. We played a best of seven show match against some team and like seven owed them. I'm pretty sure. Like we just kept playing the games and we didn't lose one of them. So yeah. I think it was Western. Uh, anyways, so. we have the, a both those teams though were them. like we were pretty even with them like a two a year and a half two years ago, yeah. and then they've had to graduate some of their better players and our team has just like consistently been practicing and so we just kind of like <laughs> but this semester we're losing our best players and i'm like come back bro get your masters what the heck yeah but <laughs> so. back on the band with bull everything was chill and then i asked to make the semifinals in the winner's bracket a best of five and still a best of three because we had gone through the first three rounds because we won our first two games yeah we won our first two games and we were in round three after like 40 minutes like at, by one o'clock we were already like in the semis and we didn't finish playing the grand finals until nine so we had to wait a really long time and so we were like hey let's make things a little longer and then there was i had posted a, a rule update earlier in the day that was like hey by the way finals and semifinals i, I forgot to put it in the rule book are going to be um best of fives but when it came to the losers bracket, they started playing best of fives in the losers bracket for se- losers semis, and I was like, oh no, I didn't mean losers semis. Like, no offense, nobody cares that it's <laughs> like <laughs> it's not gonna make a difference here, right? And um, and that's on me for not clarifying the rules, right? But a couple of the teams got upset at me. A couple of our players, not our players, one of our moderators. Western got, got upset, and that was it. Western got, but they weren't even in the match, were they? They were playing against. No, they weren't in the semis. But the, fi- they, well, the finals, I was like, they hey, were the finals... in the semis because they were 14. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I was like, but yeah. But then the like... Losers final. So the Losers those... final was against Central and Western. And they. I was like, hey, that's going to be best of three. And then both the teams were like, we want best of five. I was like, okay. And they took a vote and it was like split six, six. Half of each team wanted the one or the other. And they're like, what do we do now? I was like, coin flip, best flip of five. We're going. And so they did a uh, best of five. It didn't, the best of, it didn't matter. It didn't matter either time that they would have done it. Um, and then we beat them anyway. So it's like, but it was just funny because like first round, I think, or se- no, second round central and Western played each other in the best of three and Western won two to one and sent them to the losers bracket. And then we sent, we sent one of them to the, Oh yeah. We sent Western to the losers bracket. Mm-hmm. So both of them were in the losers bracket and then they played each other again. And it, they were close games, and so I think that's yeah, why Western really wanted games. another best of three. But Central wanted a best of five, and then blah, blah, blah. Everything happened. And Central would have won, it, it, won it, but they would have won the best of three and the best of five. Yeah, and yeah. John, John made a good point of it, too. If you're in the loser's bracket, like, think if you played in the loser's or in the winner's semis, you're playing that best of five, going to loser's semis, playing a best of five, Going to losers grand finals, um, playing a best of five. Yeah. Going to the grand finals, playing a best of five. What we're gonna do like, next year is that's losers long. finals and um lo- like both. So the grand finals and losers finals are gonna be best of five because I want those people, whoever makes it out losers bracket, really have that earn that chance. And you will be playing back to back best of fives, uh, but we're talking about doing it. So what we're talking about for for um the spring man with bowl is doing like overwatch on monday league on tuesday and just have the whole brackets but not the finals and you save all the finals for saturday and you do a grand final saturday i'm not 100 percent sold on it yet um but i kind of like the idea soon. of just doing the games that are going to take the longest to play. like mm-hmm. rainbow always takes uh, the yeah. whole day yeah so like they should do the first two rounds and then you guys can just do the like all their the finals. losers finals and grand finals combined for four hours and their losers finals yeah. the best because well, the grand finals they reset the best of five bracket or something didn't they all the all the games had a bracket reset but they were the only ones to actually trigger the reset ah nice 
Yeah, no, I, I remember watching that game was insanely long. But like, for we had like similar situation with U of M. They uh, all of our games were best of ones, but they beat everybody in like less than twenty five minutes. So like, they ran their entire side of the bracket in less than an hour and a half. Um, so at like four o'clock, they're just like, all right, we're done, and like the losers are still in the quarterfinals and stuff. So they're like, everyone's waiting to catch up to Michigan, who's been just like straight speed running this entire tournament. Um, because like last last bandwidth, while we had best of three for league, we're like, hey, look, like whoever won the first game always won the second game, anyways. So like at this point, just make best of ones. There's a very large skill gap between all of the teams that are playing, so you're like, you yeah. might as well just have best of ones. Um, That's what John was telling. It's me different too. for league too, because yeah. league is like you have the same map, and sure, there's like pick band phase, but like it's pretty much like running two games in a row is just a little bit how you choose to play the game differently. But with a game like Rainbow Six, you can literally just your team can suck on one map. And be really good on another map, and just like yeah. you know, the, the team that's like way better normally is just for some reason really off of this map. But this mid tier team is really good at one map, and like they happen to overlap. And yeah. so you can really like R six was like we really 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 need best of threes, and I was like okay, but we're that kind of happened with like that can happen in Overwatch too. Like we lost maps to teams that we shouldn't have lost because like a we just weren't playing to the best of our ability, yeah, but b we just yeah we were t- b we tossed and c. Like that's just not our strongest map. So, yeah. um, doing so, a spawn like, camp strat and then not so they so Toby, Havana, bro, Toby they got loading. into a spawn camp like team composition and then yeah. they didn't spawn camp and so they're just like getting poked so, out and dying. I'm like, what are you doing? It's the first time it happened. Well, one of our players like didn't load in until there was like five seconds left, so he was still in spawn and. And like then we were supposed to spawn camp and it just didn't work because we couldn't get there. And then our main tank didn't have player models for the first like minute and a half of the game. So we just were put in a really bad spot. And then we just like threw half of the map over, because yeah. we didn't know what to play. And we just kept swapping them all along. So yeah. it happens, but. No, like, I understand shooters and stuff, but, like, obviously, like, as we said for League, like, it's, uh, like, even though it's a 25-minute game, it's 45 minutes with, like, pick ban, loading, the spectator, everything else. So, like, if you do best of three, you're already looking at, like, an hour and a half per game. And then if you're looking at, like, 12 games per, per day, like, for, for the last bandwidth ball, we started at 8 in the morning, we didn't finish till, like, 11 for League. And it's just, like, that's not something we want to repeat. Like, yeah. we're fine starting at noon and ending at 6. Like, that's great. Like, that's perfect for us. Like, yeah. that's, you know, there's the whole day. I'm a little nervous about the whole week schedule schedule because of availability yeah, that's what i was so, thinking too because it would yeah. be so we're talking about it we'll talk so we don't have a meeting this week to, we don't have a meeting tomorrow for esports it's exam week uh-huh. we kind of give everyone the break uh yeah. and i actually have tomorrow and either. friday off so um yeah. i was like hey just call it i don't know if no one officially posted it but if he didn't i'll do it soon um, did uh counter-strike take the whole day doing best of threes or no, no they I'm went for Valorant. They went a little bit longer, but not that long. They didn't go yeah. like nearly as long as. Um... I'm just wondering for Valorant's sake for next year, but I it's it's the map dependent again. Like yeah, yeah. You know, so. But there was what with uh, Counter Strike. There's only four teams, so. Oh, it would have been a much bigger. It would have been a little bit quicker. Yeah, R six. It was like eight or nine or seven or something like that. Yeah, like I think whole, we had like a whole other round. Oh teams or something like that for league which was insane yeah. we had a bunch of teams for league this year which was That's a lot awesome. different last year yeah, yeah no it was great i mean we we, we missed out a few because i know oakland didn't go um i talked to their coaches and stuff um and a couple other universities i know didn't go but like we're gonna it, post having... a lot earlier this time for the spring like within the yeah. next month we'll be telling them like hey this the rocket April, league goes really quick too it. yeah rocket league was done mm-hmm. in like three yeah. yeah, make sure we just let everyone know that's a four fun tournament. Um, yes, because I know like a lot of people were like worried about competing and stuff. Or like, don't worry about it. Like, there's and no this trophy. Is fun. There's, like, wait, is there a trophy? There's a trophy. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, I paid no for it. But, previous uh, semesters we've done different like PayPal things, but this year I'm just paying for it out of pocket because it's I don't want them to pay. We're I, we're setting up an esports paying account for the spring, whatever. Uh, where they swim like twenty dollars a school to get in, so it's not like a team. Like if you're, just, yeah. it's literally just for the trophy. Uh, but this semester I was like, I don't want the schools to PayPal me. And then buying a trophy that seems really not cool. Um, yeah. yeah, and so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pay. It's a hundred dollars. Like it, it's a fun for a fun day. I'll do it for sure. And I still yeah. actually because of COVID Four. and everything have to get the spring men with one. But they're both going to tech, so I'm gonna get them both made at the same time and send out. <laughs> So. Nice. Uh, or just get a sponsor and have them pay for the trophy. You know, yeah, we're <laughs> talking to we're talking to Meyer, so I'm trying to get Meyer, really? Meyer okay. band with or whatever. Because yeah. it's all Michigan teams yeah. and they're a Michigan company, so. MBB Meyer band with Let's go. <laughs>
Don't even have to change it. There you go. Um, all right. And then the uh, the only question that I have written down uh, is, uh, is considering that you're graduating, you've been on the team for so long, uh, what would you say to incoming freshmen or people who are interested in joining the Overwatch team or just the East club sports in general? To join the Overwatch team, uh, for starters, I would say just play the game, join the Discord, find people to play with, talk to me talk to other people that are good at the game let us help you like i've offered tons of like my time towards our like gold and our other black team to just like try and help them get better at the game and try and understand there's so much stuff that goes on in the lower elos that they just think is going on that they're doing right and it's not what's going on like i should pick this hero on this point because this is happening and it's like why would you even consider doing that like that's not gonna happen but most of the time the people at the lower elos are just poor positioning and like just don't know how to position themselves correctly so yep, just i would like, just say play we have the players game. on our on our bnc teams that have like just they're like can't even play ranked yet because they're so low level so don't yeah. feel like oh i'm bad i don't i can't play with these guys like no we have people using controllers on a old laptop Laptops, like, you're gonna yeah. be fine like just yeah. come and join we, like we want people to come in and we want to help develop them to get better like we did with our own team like what we did with our team is what ferris esports wants to do with every team we want to have one person that is able to help and coach and pioneer teams to develop them and get better as individual players. But that mindset comes with, I want to get better. I want to get to a certain point in this game. I wanted to get to GM and I got there and I'm still there. Like you I'm have to, I, I thought to myself for a while when I was 3,600, I'm like, bro, I see people playing at 4,200. I'm not that good. But I'm like, I think I'm 4,000 good, though. And I grinded, and I got better, and I got the 4,000. And the just stuff like that right? happens. Yeah, I got the – I think my tank got, like, 4,250 or something yeah, like that. that but that was, like, just straight out of plays. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, like, it is just so important to find decent people to play with. And I think that is, like, my biggest, like, advice is to come – there's people – that are on our other teams that play five hours of overwatch every day with each other. Like that does something for a team. You know, yep. they all talk, have memes, do stuff, have their own little like personal interrelationship and friendships with each other. And that's awesome. Like, that's what we want. We have all our own personal friendships. You know, I play with one of the guys, Telos or Sam, like legitimately almost every day. And I met him through the team. So yeah, like same. he's literally my and if you're just and yeah like, we, and if you're just coming in to play any game like there is a guy in the Ferris Discord who is in high school right now but he wants to come to Ferris to play esports like that's so awesome like that's what we want mm -hmm. and that's more of what we want to do in the future who knows like maybe John can go scout some kids to be good on teams in high school like anything that we can do to get good people to come here that have a passion to play a game, have the passion to get better. Like that is like so important for us and what we want to do. And just like, look at our team. For example, we were all like 2,500 average as a team. And now we're like 4k average as a team. We found a couple new players. Sure. But like we help them get better too. They were still like diamond. They don't get yeah. better without us growing as a team. And also if you don't think that you learn stuff in a team environment, and I, this is from Overwatch personally, like you learn so much about the game playing as a team so, rather than just solo queuing. And it is a substantial amount. Even I'm playing still Call to of this Duty. Day asking, like, hey, you know, what can I do to improve? Like, if you notice me doing something, please let me know. And it's like helped yeah. me a ton as a player. Yeah. And like, I'm insane at Call of Duty right now. And you learn a lot still playing with your buddies and like making minor call outs or trying a little bit harder in a game and like ha just having a drive to get better is, is, is all it is. Like, that's it. You know, you just have to have a drive to get better and you need to be able to take criticism. And you have to ask what to do to get better. And you have, you just have to 
you just get better, bro. Just get good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, playing on a team like in solo queue, you can flank and people won't see you, and and or you won't be able to call it because they're not in voice. In an in team environment, if somebody saw you for a split second, the whole team knows where you are. It's just mm-hmm. such a different environment. I like <clears throat> playing Overwatch solo queue to me. Like, is I play it a lot, but it's just nowhere near as fun as like even just scrimming. Scrimming on a team, you're like, I'm with the boys. We're having fun. We're playing the game. We're all good at, it, and it's just so much, so much. We're fun. stomping. We're, we're doing stomping. good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by. We always appreciate having you out here, man. You know, you're on the co-host with me. We do a great job with this. Good obviously. stuff. So even when I'm at work, even yeah. when I'm at work. Yeah, right. <laughs> Big thanks to Milk, uh, uh, both of you guys for spending your time doing this out here. Milk at Astige. He's got two social media handles for brand recognition. You know how it goes. Uh, <laughs> one for Twitch, one for personal use. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. But thanks for stopping by. We'll yeah. see you next week.